Welcome to the DL Gaming Podcast. This week we're going to be talking about Beat Saber, Black Mesa, Bears in Space, Balatro. Holy fuck. That's four B names. Anyways, my name is Christian. I'm Bobby. I'm Nick. And I'm going to play a multiplayer commander. More than two people for the first time today. Bobby's coming over and Chad's already sitting in the living room, bored as shit. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited about that. I got all these fucking cards, haven't played them, so... You just uh, upset all of our fans that's like, down with magic. Yeah, I know. I hit them right off the top. <laughs> right off the top. Like, leave any more now. Oh, never mind. There is more card talk uh, coming up later. But yeah, mm-hmm. we've been card heavy this year for sure. Bro, TCGs are pretty big right now. Yeah, for sure. I feel like they've made, made a big resurgence. And um, I feel like we're one off here in our, when we mentioned the games we we're going to talk about, we got Bears, Beats, but no Battlestar Galactica. That's an old office joke, if anyone remembers that <laughs> show. Of course you do. Great show. I just finished watching it. I love Battlestar Galactica. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like how everyone just let it rest for a, for a, a well, perfect appropriate everybody, amount of time. <laughs> everybody listening is going to be like, did my did my phone just die or my car just turn off? <laughs> we'll leave that in the episode. We're going to leave that in. That's, uh, oh, 100%, man. I didn't know I, you guys watched Battlestar Galactica. I brought it up well, last time to blank faces. Yeah, no, I was talking about the show, they, The Office. There's a character in that that... It's a joke in one of the cold opens in that. But no, I watched the first episode of Battlestar Galactica, the new one, and it was like a two hour long movie. Yeah. And then they have all the episodes after that that are like shorter, but I, I couldn't get past the two hour movie introduction. But that was 15 biz- years ago. I could try again. It's no, a big ask. Don't. It really don't is. It, right? Everyone, do yourself a favor. It, it does not hold up. It is awesome. I loved watching it, but it took me two and a half years to rewatch it, right? Because it is so many filler episodes, you know, old TV. Yeah. I, test, it test, was a test. very popular show. Yeah, we can hear you. We hear it, you. it was a very popular show back in like, what, 2012, 2010, you know, somewhere around there. Like everybody was talking about how good it was. And I think it got overhyped. And that's why when I went in, I was a little disappointed. Spoiler alert, the, we're all a little uh, Cylon. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, it is a big ask, ask, like a two-hour movie before t- starting a regular TV show. It's like, I really, I really like comic books, but here's this novel you got to read before you can read those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before exactly. you can read any of the other comic books, you got to read this yeah. novel. Let's plug, let's plug it. Let's plug it. Let's let's move it along. What do we got? Yeah, what anybody we-, <laughs> we got we got <laughs> patron uh patreon uh we have our very own patreon and uh you can go and sign up and uh, for five dollars a month you get like a whole laundry list of things you get t this is not a joke you get t-shirts you get you get stickers you get a green name on our thing you get uh first first questions answered uh priority type stuff and you get the episode early so that's all good stuff um yeah are we, are we making a change to patreon sometime soon where people can suggest games for us to play when we use the patreon money to buy the game that's the thing that's already it. there we just it's, uh oh yeah. let's remind the people that have been patrons for more than a year you can make us play any game you want use the power you only get to do it once it's a one trick pony and bobby's ready to ride <laughs> <laughs> bobby will play anything especially Wait, uh, isn't that text how, heavy isn't narrative that... titles isn't that how Days had a review that like the adult game, or did she just do that on her own? Volition? What happened? I oh game? I saw it. Yeah, the, what was the one? Um, Treasure Nadia? Nadia, Treasures of Nadia. Treasures of Nadia. Oh, oh, oh. we yeah. all played that. You did. No one and asked us. <laughs> you played that. You and yeah. Amanda. Played I feel that. like somebody bought Amanda that game, which is why she played it. But I don't think she was very forced into playing it. I think she did that of her own volition. Yeah, Treasures she liked it. So, so did you, right? Christian, like it's yeah, not it was a, a great game. terrible. It game. had a great fishing mini game that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something was fishy. Yeah. On this Ooh. podcast, we ping things, uh, and I want to start off by you know we're first quarter as the corporate world calls it into 2024, and we have a list of the most downloaded Steam games that have been uh, released uh, so so far, and I wanted to ask you guys. 
before I go through this list, what do you think the most downloaded Steam game of 2024 has been? Top top downloads. Uh, hmm. Either Power World. Uh, what's the game that everyone's uh, Helldivers two? Or the finals, maybe? No, not the finals. Lethal Company? Well, yeah. the free ones. I was going to go with the free one. So I, I like the idea of the finals, but not the finals. Anyway, I'm just going to go with Baldur's Gate 3 just because uh, I think there's still residual. Or has it got on sale? I don't think it's ever been on sale. Never mind. Huh. I, I love these guesses. Yeah, I don't uh, know. I should mention this list Power has World. been put. Power World? Yeah. Perfect. The top one is Power World. This list has been put together by Simon Carles at Game Discovery Co. He runs uh, like an industry newsletter. It's pretty good. And these are just guesstimates based on the amount of followers and reviews. It all goes into an algorithm and you can kind of um, figure it out that way. But yeah, number one, Power World with 14,937,000 copies sold. They estimate the gross revenue to be $388 million in 2024, which is fucking good for them is there any so kind of money. in game currents uh can you buy are there no any there's no there's no microtransactions in <laughs> okay. the game and they 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 publicly said that they're not they're aiming to not do that they want people to buy their game uh and play it like in its entirety yeah yeah cool man a game that we're going to be talking about a bit later also made the top 10 Bellatro at 777 hundred thousand copies sold i was uh, gonna say it dude but i didn't want to sound dumb I was, it was no. like I almost said it before. Pal World. One person made that game. I mean, that is definitely the exception for one person to make a game that is this popular. But when it happens, it's awesome. Around yeah. ten million dollars worth of sales. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, also, just real quick on this list, Supermarket Simulator is number four. <laughs> All you do what? is you play as a as a, as far as I understand. Just quickly glancing at the Steam page, you are a cashier at a supermarket and you are scanning items, and that is. Uh, and you're also putting away things on shelves. You know, it's one of those Eastern European sim games. Hey, but sometimes some of those items you're scanning don't belong outside of the store, you know? So you got to check their uh, their visas or whatever. And right. get a, <laughs> yeah, like that other one. Yeah. The, yeah. the Banana Republic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I found this list fascinating. I love that Bellatro's on here. Power World number one is awesome without any microtransactions. Microtransactions. People love them. That's what I hear on the streets. Shout let's hear it for the indies. Yeah, let's hear it for the indies. Yeah. How about you, Bobby? What are you pinging this week? I just want to quickly mention that the new set of Lorcana is coming out May 17th, only two months after the last set came out. So it seems pretty quick. But what's exciting about this one is it's going to have a co-op mode, which I've never seen in a TCG before. At least Me I don't neither. think so. But it, they do have a uh, one, up to four-player co-op uh, version that is going to be coming with this new set that you can play, which I am very excited about because, uh, you know, this TCG kind of panders to uh, the younger crowd, to um, the people who don't ordinarily play, um, the the wives or girlfriends or significant others that aren't really into it, but like Disney, um, so they're somewhat interested in in it. And uh, I think the co op mode is a great idea, and the game's been pretty well designed so far. So I have. Uh, confidence that they're going to do a good job with this that's an incredible idea man i fucking love it like a, yeah once like i heard it i was like it's so obvious like, yeah but uh bobby can you also play each other with that new set do you yeah, know yeah. okay gotcha cool best of both worlds um i was at um a barbecue last night and um sam's brother is very into tech and stuff and so we were talking about something and he's like well let's find out and he pulls out his chat gtp uh chat gtp uh what do you call it? app and you can talk to it now you don't have to type anymore and not only does it work very well um it sounds like a real person and kind of stutters a little bit and thinks about things and says um instead of just like blank you know it, it'll work it totally sounds human um it still it was repetitive sometimes when we were trying to dig deeper into a certain subject but it was very impressive um if you want to see what i'm talking about if you put in uh if you into uh youtube if you put ai uh, open ai robot 
you'll they put this program into a functioning humanoid robot and uh, it does things and it responds and it's crazy man it is is very cool um so yeah check that out it's a must watch it's a short video we're so close to being wiped out. Like we're so, so close. Fucking close. <laughs> so close. I was on uh, Wall Street Bets, and this guy's like, "Guys, listen, Nvidia and Microsoft are the plays." He's like, "They're gonna see unprecedented profits when they wrangle AI. Then we're all gonna die. But before then, might as well like get a little bit of the good stuff right before the end. You know, like might as well just like." Uh, pour all your money into it. I was like, eh, it's not a bad idea. And the more money you have, I guess, the, the longer maybe you can hold out against the robots. I don't Put know. Put it into a bunker, you know? Yeah. Build one the right robots are, the have microtrans the robots have microtransactions and you can give them Steam gift cards to live a little longer. <laughs> 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 Nick, you have some bad news. Yeah, I guess yeah, it's bad I have news, some, right? <coughs> it's kind of bad news. I don't know. Um, so in a recent... X post. I hate calling it that. It's stupid. It's Twitter. Just call it Twitter. Uh, Just call it Twitter. Post. Yeah. In a recent Twitter post, along with uh, some more defining information in an interview, um, the developers of uh, Baldur's Gate 3, aka Larian Studios, announced that there will be no DLC for um, Baldur's Gate 3, and there will be no Baldur's Gate 4. The reason being is that Wizards of the Coast, the people that make magic and D&D, uh, officially own all of the characters now and the whole IP now. Um, and that their next game, uh, Larian Studios' next game, is going to be so large and complex, it's going to dwarf Baldur's Gate 3. That's what they said in their own words. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> uh, no one really knows if it's going to be a high fantasy game. It's not going to be a Divinity uh, game, they said. Um, but yeah, it's kind of uh, sad news, right? Because a lot of people... If you haven't played Baldur's Gate and you haven't finished it yet, I don't really care. I'm not going to ruin the ending for you. Uh, but a lot of people think that the main ending for one of the characters named Lazel was going to be the DLC for the game. But I guess they're, like I said, they're not doing it. Um, so, uh, like I said, that is kind of sad news. Um, but the thing is, they they know what they want. They know what people want. They don't. They obviously haven't missed with their last release. And so, here's to hoping that in three or four years, whenever their next project comes out, that it's amazing. Well, Bob or Nick, it sounds like an opportunity for you to write some fan fiction, dude. Here's the time. <sighs> Lazel. Lazel. What if they're yeah, working on sports too? Oh, sports oh my God. God. <laughs> it's going to dwarf. <laughs> you made me out. <laughs> Nothing would fucking. I, I, I would take all my money out of Microsoft <gasps> and NVIDIA and put it into the <laughs> <Dude. laughs> <it's a> sport too. <laughs> That's the bet. That's the bet. That's the bet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, on this show, we also have highlights. Don't we, Christian? What else we do, do we say there? These are games that we've played and we want to talk about in further detail. Nick has been playing a brand new game called Beat Saber. Um, you know what's funny is it's not brand new, but they're still adding shit to uh to them. I mean to the game, right? Um so Beat Saber just came out with a new music pack. It's the Daft Punk music pack. It contains, I believe, uh 10 songs. Uh you get it for 14 bucks when it's on sale. Um, what's interesting if you about it is that it contain original um, Daft Punk songs, but there are remixes that combine songs and things like that. I've played every single song so far. They're all pretty challenging on Hard and Expert. Um, but what I will say is that I discovered something after playing multiplayer for the first time is that there is a 360 mode in the game uh, where you can play certain songs in 360, which is insane. Um, <laughs> So the way it works is that the ground beneath you has like uh, lines in every like angle and the lines will line up and tell you which way the, the notes are coming from. So if something's coming from behind you, the lines like the lines will glow underneath your legs, but they'll be short. And that means it's something behind you. Uh, most songs don't have any quick changes like that, uh, but some of them do. Uh, most of the time you're like gradually spinning and doing the songs. Um it, I'm guessing you're I'm, playing wireless, Nick. Yes, I'm playing wireless. Yeah, because that wouldn't work with my all that spinning. Uh, I yeah. learned, I learned when I was playing. Um, what game was I playing? Oh, there, some archery game where like ninjas were popping up all over the place, and they're like, you know, 360 all around you. And uh, I realized that I only turn left, 
And so I was wound up in my own cord and fucking almost <laughs> fell over. Like a fucking Looney Tunes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm, uh, I'm I'm making the references that nobody's getting, but you guys have seen Zoolander, right? Yeah, right. he so I'm, not, right, I'm right. not an Ambi Turner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you I actually, him. Uh, John has this like retractable fucking cord holder, and I bought it, and I just never installed it because I've had it for. It's probably been six months since I played VR. So next time I play VR, I'll you know it holds the cord above you, and then uh, if you happen to duck or whatever, it re- it extends and retracts. So yes, interesting. But, so. Last thing I mentioned about the uh, last two things I mentioned about Beat Saber is that uh, apparently, according to a couple of Reddit posts, um, Beat Saber is going to be coming out with a new music pack targeting every two months. Um, it's going to follow the format of uh, individual artist, individual artist, and then a medley, um, which is interesting. So, like, it'll be like all of the weekend and then all of the Lizzo, and then like it'll be like a record labels medley that they choose. Um, for those who don't know, ever since the MetaQuest 2 came out, uh, it's been increasingly, increasingly difficult to modify your own songs into the game or some of the songs that the community has made. Um, the reason being is that they want to make it more difficult. So you buy the official packs, um, and what the official packs boast is that there's like new moves and functions, uh, that you can do while you're in the game. So, um, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm kind of sad in like, that you can't really mod the game too easy anymore. Like it requires a lot of setup if you're just like a normal person that's not used to like modding hardware and stuff like that, but or software. But uh, yeah, it's just it's still a great game. It's super fun. Um, I play like I think thirty to thirty minutes to an hour every day now, except for like two days a week. I used to get uh, the workout. It's a good. And... It's a good workout, dude. <clears throat> totally yeah. is. Uh, Especially hey, if playing on expert. Off. Hey Nick. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, there was something about like you have to have a meta account at this point or something. So, so yeah, I, I don't know the specifics, but apparently the, the, they have like a partnership with meta now. Um, and you don't need a you don't need a meta account if you're playing off of Steam, like directly off of oh, Steam. OK, but there is like multiplayer that's hosted through meta that is apparently like just better structured and has better connections and things like that. Um, so if you want to do that, you can do, you can play it that way, but there is cross play. Like you can like, so you can invite people through meta the night. The nice thing that I got to test out as well is the party chat function. The built-in microphone and the built-in headphones are not bad, um, for the, for the multiplayer because me and my friends will call each other and just have a group call and play that way. You don't have, to, there's no discord on the, on the quest three. So, um, I would say that. What was it? Wait, what was the question again? I don't know. No, I, I don't think there uh, was. I could I have sworn though. Walked, I could have sworn that uh, I read that like you're not going to be able to use your quest at some point without going through Meta. Oh, are you talking about the actual the actual like hardware? Yeah, you have to have a Meta account essentially now. Yeah. Um, you can you can technically like get around a bunch of stuff and just remove a bunch of like the locks. Um, but it once again, it's really in depth. It requires like reprogramming and um, like plugging into your computer and running certain software and programs. And then again, you like you lose all of your support for your your quest. Right. So like, it's there's a bunch of shit. Um, well, that yeah, that that was a bird walk. So I'm not gonna go on one. I was gonna talk about how Rock Band is fucking still around, which blows my goddamn mind that Rock Band is still around. Uh, but instead, I'm gonna talk about Black Mesa. So Bobby's beaten and played this game we've talked about it before i've started to play this game and talked about it before uh so i don't want to bore anyone with too many details that they don't already know but at the end of this weekend i will have beaten black mesa i'm so close right now i just didn't quite make it um this is one of the best games ever made and when i was playing it again i got kind of a director's cut experience because i was watching the no clip how the game was made documentary as I was playing, mm. which was an awesome experience because uh, I guess I just figured Valve would be a little bit more hands on with the the remake. Uh, but they said time and time again that they literally did not hands off. Like 
once they gave them the license to produce the game, no direction from Valve as far as like, hey, don't modify this level. Hey, please, you know, um, keep this intact. Don't change this here. They didn't do any of that. It's like, okay, yeah, go have fun. Remake it however you want. And um, that's pretty cool. They uh, must, there must have been a, like some sort of meeting where like proof of concept, like this is our ideas. And then they're like, they yeah, gave, run with it. You know? Yes, yes. They yeah. gave them a really early alpha of, of the game. And in the No Clip documentary, he was saying that he was worried because it's, it wasn't good. Like a lot of stuff was broken. Uh-huh. It wasn't there. And Valve was like, yeah, okay. I think you got some good bones here. And he was surprised. He was like, oh, thank God. They're going to like let us do our thing. Uh, yeah. And let us let us sell it, you know, which was um, which was a surprise to them that uh, Valve was going to let them do that. Um, Sniper, just a quick question: uh, yeah. Did you play the original Half Life? Like, no, so I'm coming all? into no? this without playing any Half Life game at all. So, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's right. So I would, yeah, I'm I'm wondering from the perspective of someone who's like played the whole game recently and then has played Black Mesa, and I'm wondering if it's worth the buy. I know it's like one of the best remakes of all time, but then again, it's like a fucking 14 hour game. I think, so. yeah. So if you look at that perspective, obviously I can't provide it, but playing this game is like, especially with that documentary in the background, dude, they were talking about the design philosophy of valve and how they, uh, when they were doing the remake, they started at the beginning levels and then they ended at the end level. Like they made it um, timeline wise when they were least experienced was at the beginning. So when I was playing through the beginning, I was getting lost all sorts of times. I was doubling back. Things weren't making sense. And as I was having that experience in the documentary, they were kind of talking about um, how they made mistakes in the beginning. And by the Mm -hmm. end, they thought they had fixed a lot of those mistakes. And yeah, at, at the end, I haven't doubled back once. Everything is very clear. It is environmental storytelling at its best. I mean, that's what valve is. Um, valve is known for right there's no dialogue that tells you what to do or where to go you know it's just cleverly placed items so that when you walk into a scene it's a little bit more clear the puzzles you have to complete and and how you might start tackling them right i mean yeah definitely think of a lot of other uh, single player games you know they're guiding you with like waypoints and stuff there's not there's none of that it's all the environment I remember uh, reading uh, the design behind TF2, and they were talking about the the borders of how far you can go in a level. And he's like, if you just put walls, how boring is or crates, how boring is that? But if you have infinite, like infinity pool levels where like the edge drops off, but it's obvious that you're not supposed to go that way. Like, sure, there's a wall there. There's a hard wall. You can't go that way. But nobody tries because it's obvious that, but it looks like you could if you wanted to. That's the best. Yeah. It looks like a real place, but nobody tries to walk over there because it's obviously not the way you're supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in the Snowclip documentary, they were talking a little bit about that too, because the previous levels when you're earthbound are pretty linear. I mean, you're in hallways, you're underground for, for most of it. But when you're in Zen, this alien dimension, uh, it is vastly open. You know, you look around you. There's islands floating everywhere. It it's like uh, it's like Pandora. It was what it reminds me of in some like endless jungles in some parts, and it's beautiful. Um, but somehow, I'm not getting lost. I got more lost in the office level at the very beginning of the game than I am yeah. on this sprawling thing because it's very clear what I'm supposed to do just based on um, you know where, where they put things. So. Uh, the game gives you everything at exactly the right point, basically. I feel like it's perfected it. Health, hints, and story exactly when you need it to progress you along. It's like <laughs> playing It's like playing a movie. You know, it, it, <laughs> I never feel not challenged, but I also never feel like unfairly taken advantage of by the game. You know, I'm always like, oh, I did that wrong there. And it's effortless to um, correct my mistakes, you know? So I guess... I want to wrap up the Black Mesa section by saying, great game, and this is maybe the game you want to introduce people to if they haven't had a first-person narrative shooter experience before, just because it's so well-designed. Like, this remake, I think, is what you want to get people started on. Um, I was thinking, uh, you know, 
uh, Rian plays a lot of top-down games, uh, like roguelikes, like Hades and, and puzzle games. If she wanted to play a game like this, this is what I would recommend to her, you know, because I think it would just be effortless for her to go through it. Um, yeah. You guys have all played Half-Life 1 and I assume Black Mesa, except Nick, right? Yeah, I've not played Black Mesa. Yeah, I played Half-Life 1. I finished but... it. Um, back in the day, uh, anytime anybody wanted to get into PC gaming, I would, I would like, you have to play Half-Life 2 first. Because uh, one, back then it was far more true. But once you have the mechanics down for Half-Life, almost all, control, all games control WASD, space jump, uh space bars jump um look with your mouse you, you can play it used to be like 60 70 percent of games once you could play half-life but now it's way less uh, i think there's a lot more control schemes out there but um yeah it was just a must if you're gonna buy a pc for gaming you have to play this and it's gonna make everything if you understand half-life you understand pc gaming uh, that's how it was for a while and uh it's still true to some extent yeah. What's crazy? Have you ever um there's a guy like on Reddit, he recorded his wife playing computer games for the first time ever. She's like, I've never played computer games at all growing up. I never played video games on consoles. And he just like he's like, I'm not going to instruct you how to do anything. I'm going to just literally let you play the game. And he did that, and then like he like let her play Mario and a couple of other games. And he's like, I just want to see how intuitive certain things are to people. And when he talked about like um, like for PC, once she figured out it's like oh WASD to move, spacebar to jump, her ability to adapt to everything is exactly how you said. Like most games control like that, so it becomes intuitive. To, like WASD is to walk around, spacebar is jump, left left click to shoot, right click is aim. Like that comes like a second second nature as soon as you experience that for the first time. Apparently. Hmm. They really know. Whoever invented the mouse and keyboard, man, fucking <laughs> hats off. Hats like, off. Um, Bobby, uh, the whole time I was talking, you had this uh, look on smug. your face. Like, yeah, smug. smug like, like eh, don't, uh, it's like you were just on the verge of saying, eh. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on Black Mesa? And do you think I'm being too, you know, theatrical about this experience? No, I really like Black Mesa. I thought it was great. It's been a long time since I've played it, so I'm having trouble recalling my experience i remember and i i could be wrong here but i remember the earlier levels being more closely identical to the original game and then as the game went on they got further and further away from that took a lot more liber liberties um in a good way though I, I remember my big takeaway from that game was they they made all the right decisions when remaking it because Half-Life 1 is a very old game. I mean, that came out in, what, 98? So it's a, it's a tough game to play this day and age. But if you play Black Mesa, Black Mesa fits in with any other first-person shooter or any other video game out there right now. Um, but it started off as a mod. And um, I think it wasn't until, like, 2015 that they actually started to make it their own game. And when you were talking about Valve, uh, Valve is, like, super hands-off. I... Every time someone has approached Valve or Gabe, I feel like with um, like, hey, you should make a movie about Half-Life or Portal or something. They always say, yeah, great. You go and do it. <laughs> like that's always been their attitude <laughs> yeah. with everything. Like they're just like, yeah, you do it. Like we're too busy making billions of dollars on Steam. So I, <laughs> I, I don't I, I'm not surprised that they were very hands off with this developer. I mean, they might have wanted to, of course, protect their IP if they thought like they were going to do something really bad or have a sex scene with Gordon Freeman or something. They might be like, okay, oh, hold God. on now. But, you know, I think they, they trusted these people because they had seen the work they had done with the mod and knew that they were trying to recreate the game in a faithful way. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're, they're definitely interested in letting other people do the work. I, I kind of am wondering what's next for Crowbar Collective, because when I was watching this documentary, it was very clear that they were so inspired by what Valve did, but then they did it better you know they're like oh this is how they designed a level and zen wasn't really good when it was out on half-life one the first time so we're just gonna make it four hours longer and fix everything we feel like is wrong with it and now do they take that torch and make something of their own i mean they're called crowbar collective so are they kind of <laughs> limited in the scope of what they're doing i don't know nah. i just want to know what's next for these guys you know 
I could remake Blue Shift and make it good this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I when I first played Black Mesa, it wasn't done yet. The game ended right when you portaled to Zen. Um so I remember I took a break from it for a long time, then came back. And I think I played the the thing all the way through, start to finish. Um I, I think I had to. I think my save wouldn't work anymore. Uh, but yeah, start to vin- finish through Zen. And yeah, that's when it really starts to deviate from the original game. But the, I also remember just, I don't know how far you are in the game, but when you get very close to the the very end, I think maybe even the final boss fight, it gets really interesting. They take one of the weapons from the original Half-Life and it auto reloads itself, if I remember correctly, which I thought was an interesting idea. It's a great way to pace the player and not make them too powerful but like you know give them some limits in combat but also not give them the boring task of having to run around and collect ammo um you're talking about the laser uh rocket launcher not the rocket launcher it was like the laser zap thing yeah zap. Yeah. Mm. yeah 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 so i mean last time we talked about black mesa emilio said something funny he said breaking news half-life still a great game and yeah it is again it is still a great game and if you haven't experienced black mesa um pick it up and and buy it you know you're supporting a group of people who are just very passionate about what they do the game itself is just super high quality um and now we're gonna switch to a different game uh ostriches in space what's happening (laughs) Uh, Bears in Space, which it's appropriate that we're talking about this right after Black Mesa, because this is also a first-person shooter. Um, It's a, I guess what you would call a boomer shooter, although I don't know if that really applies here, but it definitely is like an older, it's appealing to the uh, people who played those old 90s shooters. So in this game, you play an astronaut that somehow got his DNA fused with a bear and you're fighting robots on their robot planet. It's pretty wacky. It's out there. Uh, Super fast paced, bullet hell, just run around, blow things up, um, get new weapons, upgrade those weapons. Uh, It's got the same. So I played the demo of it and the game is actually available for purchase. Now you can buy it. I believe it's like 18 bucks. Um, But when I loaded up the demo right away, they give you this screen that says we've been working on this for seven years. We're only three developers and we've changed the demo. So you're going to get more guns and they're going to upgrade faster so you can experience more of the game and get a good idea of what it's like. And I I've noticed they've done a lot better job with demos just in general lately. And this is a good example of it where they used to just throw out a demo and here's like level one or here's level two or something. I remember playing the original far cry demo and it was just that first level. And they don't really do that anymore. They kind of cultivate the demo to expose you to everything and really sell it to you. Um, so I appreciated that they did that. The, it's, it takes about an hour to get through this demo. It's a level. It's got a boss fight at the end. You, you get through all the weapons. It gives you a really good idea of, of what it's like. And well, you're not going to buy it. I might. I might pick this up. So here's, here's the yeah, thing. Great it demo. Is, It is very great demo. Okay. game. No, (laughs) no. I mean, it's good. I like, I like the, um, the progression in the weapons. I I think that was what was always missing with these old games. The way that they handle progression is by getting access to new weapons. Um, but that, that gets a little stale and you run into the risk of once you get a new weapon, it completely it makes all your other weapons completely obsolete so it's like why am i going to use any of that stuff anymore so i like the idea of upgrading your weapons here so that's that's good um but this game it it tries really hard to be humorous it's got that same type of humor as high on life and almost a similar graphic style too but i feel like the gameplay is a lot better high on life i never made it through i i kind of enjoyed it i definitely enjoyed the humor but the the actual first person shooting was uh whatever you know it was like completely uninspired yeah um and i think they had boss fights in that too because you went on bounty yeah. missions if i recall yeah and i i didn't think the boss fights were all that great the the one boss fight that they showcased in the bears in space demo was really good it was actually very challenging and it was um 
just a lot of positional awareness and and it was it was good i enjoyed it it was not like um i'm trying to think of a bad boss fight or like an example but i can't think of it right now but i don't know i know a good boss fight when i see it in a first person shooter <laughs> it's more of a vibe <laughs> i'm watching yeah. a little bit of the video man it's reminding me of uh doom 2016 that kind of has that speed to it yeah you're you yeah. run really fast i and when i first started playing it i was like i feel like i'm moving too fast i adjusted the mouse speed but still i've i've quickly realized that wasn't the problem my character was just moving too fast so it really <laughs> kind of pushes you to just run around like hotline miami style where it's just all about like speed you know just go quick um but it's it's a good game if i were going to play first of all who plays like single player first person shooter games anymore like that's it's kind of like an obsolete yeah except what, christian with black what are you talking about yeah. so many people play these games i don't know do they i mean you do but you play it for a week and then you beat it and then uh, and then, then you, you go back again. to your yeah. something more long form you can't play a game like this for years mm -hmm. it's impossible yeah, I just feel like traditionally these types of games don't do well. So Bears in Space has like 45 reviews on Steam. Very positive, but, uh, you know, not a lot of people are picking it up. Obviously, Black Mesa is going to have a lot of people because everybody loves Half-Life and it's very nostalgic for it. Um, Dude, the last one that Nick boomer shooters, though. Um, yeah, they blow they up. They have a huge player base. People love like the actual original Doom, you know, the pixelated ones. Maybe not so much yeah. this style, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I guess so. Like Dusk and uh, all Nightmare those ones Reaper. that have. Yeah. <laughs> nice to sneak back. <laughs> By the way, uh, John Carmack was on Lex Friedman last year or something. And uh, it's a four and a half hour podcast and it's fantastic. I much, uh, I, I recommend it highly. All right. We should make our podcast four and a half hours. No, oh, no. <laughs> they could fall asleep from blue oh, sugar boy. in his blood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh Bellatro, uh this is the this is the runaway hit uh for this month um <clears throat> rather other than the hell divers i'd say um so i'm looking at 97 percent uh positive reviews over with 20 000, almost twenty one thousand reviews it's it's a lot it's a lot and you look at it and you're like there's not a whole lot there you know it's like poker so I'm playing it. I played it for three hours today, three and a half hours, something like that. And um, at first I was like, oh, like in order for this setup to be as good as what I'm seeing, it has to have some uh, like inscription in it. Like something's going to happen. Some like spooky meta, like weird a meta shit. Story. Yeah, like a meta game or something. Yeah. And I didn't get to that point. Um but I did get to the point where I was fucking late to the podcast because I couldn't stop playing <laughs> this game. Um, it's very calm. There was a, I would say the best thing about it is the highs and lows. Like um, you will get combos. It's a poker game, roguelike, deck builder. So um, roguelike, I guess, because uh, after every run, you if you did okay, uh, you get a little bit stronger. So um, you'll get a new deck of cards and that might have some bonus that you like. Anyway, so it's all about modifiers and multipliers and getting enough points to go to the next level, uh, to the next set. Um, and you'll get a combo, and it happened to me probably three times today where I was like, oh, I fucking... Fuck you, game. There's no way you're going to stop me. I am unstoppable at this point. Like, I literally, I had this combo where all I had to do was make a pair. I, you get like, and I was getting nine cards per hand. All I have to do is make a pair. And I was getting like 2,000 points per pair. I was like, Psh. like, I'm unstoppable. There's no way. But, you know, the carrot keeps moving forward at an exponential rate at some point, like if you, especially if you're scripting levels, cause you're like, this is too easy. I'm just going to skip. It's good that it gives you that option. But like the, to give you an example, the very first level that you need to be is 600 points. You get 600 points, you win. Um, 
by level 15, I think is the highest I got. Uh, that's not true. I got higher, but level 15 is like um, 30,000 points. But nothing's changed other than your modifiers and your combo system and everything like that. So getting 2,000 per pair, pair of cards isn't enough at some point. So you have to modify your combo at, while you're, you have to think about this. It's going to be getting harder. Even though you feel like you broke the game, it doesn't last very long. And so you have ebbs and flows. And then you have the, every once in a while, you'll have the, you're, you'll be in the last hand and you have to, ha uh, you have to make a certain amount of points and you're like, I have to make this work. And there's a little bit of, that's the only time that there's any real stress. You're like, oh, is this going to be enough? And you can't do the math in your head. You can basically be like, is 650 times 44 enough? I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, some quick man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that you click it and then you hope for the best, you know, you did the best you can. Um, the music's pretty groovy. Um, my biggest complaint was that it's funny. I was going to come to this podcast and say, uh, it's too slow. Like once you get the game, it's good for learning, but once you get the game, you're like, Oh, come on. Come on. I know. I, I know the bonuses. You don't have to run through everything for me. And I was trying to quit the game, and to quit the game, I went to options, and options, there's a, a game speed up. So I have no complaints. So you can speed speed the game up to 1.5, 2 uh, 2x, everything. Um, highly recommends 15 bucks. It's a big time waster, I would say, because, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why this is less worthy than, like, Black Mesa, but... I feel like it's like playing solitaire a little bit. Like I, even though there's progression, I I don't know. There's no story or whatever. I gotta play because you're talking and it's great. And I don't think there's anything. Maybe there's nothing wrong with what you're saying. Maybe it's just on the game side. I still don't know what the fuck you're. I don't know what this game is. You know, I I still don't really know what the hook or what the interesting part of this game is. It's why a rogue so many people basically. It's a roguelike applied to a three thousand year old game. And that 3,000 year old game's been around. Maybe I'm inflating. Maybe it's a thousand years old, but that thousand year old game is a re around for a reason, right? Can it's, I play this good. game if I don't know how to play poker? That's, that's no. it. You, have to Dude, you, can learn, you can learn poker in like five minutes. Yeah, 10, five It's 10 not minutes. hard. It's not okay, hard. Okay, cool. Sweet. A couple weeks ago, I learned how to chess, juggle. Man. Actually, no. In like four hours. And I was like, yeah. huh, that, that's all it's Now you're in the circus. It's easy, <laughs> dude. <laughs> dun, 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 hey, <laughs> juggling chainsaws. <laughs> easy. <laughs> Yeah, a Cirque du Soleil pop up came up on your. P they knew somehow. They're like, oh, another juggler is born. Spawned. <laughs> <Another juggler. laughs> yeah. Now and there's Cirque dozens Soleil. of us. <laughs> I remember watching Cirque du Soleil as a kid and being mouth agape. At I was like, oh my god, he's running on a hamster wheel and he jumps and he runs on another hamster wheel going the opposite direction. That's fucking sick. Uh, and I haven't gone and seen Cirque du Soleil since, you know. Dude, I, I just have Cirque it in my Soleil. childhood memory. I saw Love in Las Vegas. That's the uh, the Beatles uh, themed Cirque du Soleil. I cried. I cried. Me and Sam were sitting there crying, dude. Wow. That's how beautiful it was. That's that must be cool storytelling. Yeah. Beatles overrated, probably, right? Like <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the sigh. All right. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> does does uh, anyone have any? Is anyone else going to try out Blatro? No, no. I think Bobby would enjoy it. There's a there's some monster trainee feels, Bob, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of interested in it, but I don't know. Let's see. All right, on the radar. Okay. How can see if these be on the radar, Bobby? We've played this. <laughs> so this game, of course, has come up before. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about season 12. But before I do that, I actually just remembered all of a sudden about a game that I wanted to put on the radar this week. And I'm going to sneak it in really quick. There's not a lot of info about this game. It is Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. There's not a lot of information about this game right now. It was just announced in January. And it is a new Indiana Jones game that is being made by Machine Games, which made that Wolfenstein game from 2015, which was a lot of fun. 
talking and that was a first person shooter that everybody liked and enjoyed along with doom 2016 so i guess there's still some life to this genre um but i just wanted to uh <laughs> well bobby sorry before you go on what is on the radar those words were said but i don't know what, what's happening yeah, we did kind is that of different right from in highlights that. that is so these are games that we haven't played uh but we are interested in um so yeah, Machine Games, I've got faith in this developer. They made uh, Wolfenstein, what, what do they call that? Wolfenstein, The New Order, and one of the DLCs are, are one of the smaller standalone games. So I am, uh, I'm, I'm confident that they're going to make a decent game with this. Um, but re- they, there's a Steam page for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, but really just not a whole lot of information about it yet. Um, mm. Some like cutscene gameplay trailers, but that's that's about it. Some Are you a pretty big uh, Jones head, Bobby? Would you say a Joneser? Indiana Jones. You know what's funny? Jones. Like I really just like Raiders, and that's it, man. I don't like. Well, okay, and the one with Sean Connery. Those are like the only two that I liked. I never liked. Um, what was the second one that was all really dark? Like just, uh, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, never cared for that one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, of course I like these movies, but I'm not like super into it. Mm. Hmm. But, okay. It's understandable. Yeah. All right. Just wanted to mention that, but see if uh, thieves season 12 is starting on April 30th. They've talked about a whole bunch of new features they are going to add to this to sum it up. There's going to be new weapons. Uh, some of the more interesting ones are skeleton bombs. You throw a bomb and it just explodes into skeletons that goes and attacks people for you. I thought that was cool. And uh, daggers that you can throw. And if you miss, someone can pick that dagger up and throw it back at you. So well, that's cool. <laughs> um, and then they're just adding more mobility to the game. It's amazing how far this game has come. It used to be such a slog in a lot of ways, and they've improved it a lot. But more mobility, the game definitely needed it you can now zip line on harpoon cables that you shoot so sick that's red and they're adding this horn and this horn does all sorts of things so this is just like an item you can find uh, while sailing around in the game i maybe do a quest to get it but the horn you can blow on it and it blows wind into your sails or you can blow it at a person and it pushes them off your ship oh. or you can get on one of the little dinghy boats and just blow it from the back and turn that thing into like a jet ski um or you can oh, cool. use it and when you're falling you can blow <laughs> downward and use it to cushion your fall there's just all sorts of things you can oh. do with this um it's getting yeah. horny for the horn uh, i don't know about that one Nick, do you have a horn in your back pocket <laughs> do you have a do you have a horn sound effect somewhere on your body me no no, no? <laughs> emilio do you make a horn noise the old like uh, 1920s car horn <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, I imagine this sounding That's more right. like That's a right. conch shell or something. Uh, um, okay. And they've also announced that they're dedicating a team to working on bugs, which I don't know how game development works, but that seems like a good idea. Um, it, seems, it seems like, why are you starting with that now? That's what that seems like. I'm yeah. sure that's been like, there the whole time. Maybe I they're mean, just yeah, probably. It. But maybe to address like, because they're making a lot of changes on this, so maybe they need people to um, address issues that come up. Um uh, I think uh, now that you're talking about this horn, dude, I, I, I'm not a game dev either, dude, but like some fucking legendary items that only a certain few people get to have, d- stories would be talked about it and it would circulate and fucking news articles would be talked about it, you know, like fucking really cool, like this guy has the golden anchor, fucking teleport your boat wherever, you know, stuff like that, o- only like one or two or whatever, mm-hmm. 10 I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah, but if it again. gave you an advantage over other players, I think people would, um, there'd probably be a lot of upset people uh, if that were the case. And Sea of Thieves has been really good about just like putting everybody on an even playing field. Um, Can I talk about a legendary item really quick? Um, so there was, in EverQuest, there was a rod. I forget what it was called, Rod of Ruin. Oh, that's what it was, Rod of Ruin. And it when you're hitting things with it, it could proc a lightning bolt and the lightning bolt would do like 110 damage or something like that. And um, it was broken because there was no level minimum level on it. So, it was, and you didn't have to bind it. So you could give it to a twink and a twink that usually does like fucking five damage a hit. 
is now doing 110 damage proc. And so anyway, these things are going for $1,500 each, right, on eBay. And <laughs> this fat level one troll has two of them, one in each hand. And I'm walking around, and I have a crowd of people walking around behind me. They're like, this guy has two rods of ruin. I'm going up against fucking dinosaurs, <laughs> fucking killing them with one hit, dude. Fucking, it was awesome, dude. I got from like level one to the level 20 in, I don't know, like a week. And then I give them back. I was just borrowing them. They weren't mine. But yeah, hmm. that was a legendary item. Legendary. Wow. I do like the idea of the golden anchor as just something you came up with on the spot. That's kind of. Well, I was just thinking because pirates and lore go hand in hand, you know? Yeah, no, I think it's good. No, very Dude, much can, so, we, yeah. can we think of any other legendary items for Sea of Thieves on the spot? Uh. The mutation musket, dude. Like fucking you shoot somebody and it turns them into some I don't know. Okay. I'm thinking the spyglass of sunshine. When you Ooh. use it, it it, it uh, parts the clouds of stormy weather. Oh, you so point. sick, dude. I love yeah. it. Mm. Clears up a or storm. The, the Midas cannonball, like when you hit it, it just makes one side of the boat gold and they Ooh. can only turn that direction. Hmm. Zoolander again, <laughs> making another appearance. <laughs> <Not> an <invitation. laughs> <laughs> all right well well that's it um i just want to also give a quick shout out Look, to bobby uh, can't be bothered with fancy dude he's not gonna make a fantasy item he's not gonna do it dude he just won't participate <laughs> uh no, dude i'm not gonna sit here and pitch my first draft ideas on a live podcast <laughs> he's, man. He's, he's he's like the sale of sailing <laughs> 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 works okay, like a normal to, sale uh, the, the Snoop Doggy show. Dog mixtape <laughs> what were you going to uh, I, I just want to thank False Josiah he gave me a, <laughs> a key for some in-game items appreciate that man uh, looking forward to getting back into Sea of Thieves season 12 April 30th check it out yeah buddy um, so jeez oh, I forgot who did this somebody go Bulwark fucking here Okay, Bulwark, Falconeer Chronicles. So this is that sandbox uh, logistics builder that's kind of in the, uh, oh, I forget, the <laughs> steampunk, in the steampunk atmosphere with zeppelins and, you know, all the things that go along with it mixed with Scandinavia. So um, these fjords with uh, really steep hillsides and endless oceans that you kind of expand and are up against the terrain of um, I've talked about this game before. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm super excited for it. It releases on Tuesday, March 21st. So when this podcast comes out, it'll be out, and it's fucking hella hype. And I'm gonna be playing. I'm gonna be playing it. Uh, the Next Fest demo was awesome. Uh, maybe one of the best demos I've played on Next Fest, uh, at least for City Builders. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. It looks original too, I... man. Yes, it it is. Uh, so I guess. All these games have a gimmick. Uh, a gimmick is a negative word, but all of them have like a twist. And this one is the levels of the mountains. So you're building your logistics train not only in this two-dimensional space as you would like a normal city builder, but also um, elevation-wise because you have to get up these big mountains. And yeah. the higher you go, the different challenges of weather that you run into um, and the different resources you can explore. So that's kind of the interesting cool thing that i'm excited to try and it, it was very unique when i was playing it the first 10 minutes i was unsure i was like oh this is not intuitive and then when i got it i was like oh my god they they've come up with something awesome and new here and i'm so excited to play so yeah i have my good. answer now uh, yeah I, it looks good man for sure um uh, scram tx he shared zucosis on our on the radar on our discord dlgaming.net by the way that's where you get to our patron and uh other stuff just go there dlgaming.net click around find some stuff um some rewarding stuff um so zucosis at first i was like oh this is just a um what do you call it a uh five nights at freddy's clone uh in a zoo but mm, that is untrue although i'm basing that on Five Nights at Freddy's one. I think there's like six iterations now. I don't know how those play, but this is a 
they call themselves a body cam horror simulation game. So you're walking around. I guess you're you're a zookeeper. This is your first night, and you have a body cam. So that's the footage that you're seeing. the The look of the game uh, is a huge selling point for me. Um, I it looks like a carnival horror type thing. You know, like everything's under a black light. Um, something Very glow. Shiny. It's yeah. huh? A lot of things are shiny, from what I'm seeing. On yeah. The- I, I don't know how to explain this exactly other than, yeah, it looks like a carnival black light thing. And um, so the zoo, the animals are mutating. Uh, there's some sort of toxic shit somewhere. And uh, they you either find them and help them before they turn or they turn and they kill you. And uh, from what I saw, the character design is terrifying. I don't know. I just I'm, watching yeah. the trailer as you're talking, and I'm terrified. As fuck yeah, this. it's pretty fucking Gangaroo, scary, dude. Man. Oof. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> it's pretty gnarly. <laughs> that was a wallaby. Jeez. Anyway, um, yeah. Uh, if you're into these kind of games, go go check it out. Uh, I think it looks great. Uh, I don't know if it's too scary for me, but the graphics and the design are uh, selling points for sure. I think it might be a little bit of a mystery walking sim. You know, I don't think there's too much action. I think it's, you know, grab this, take it there, interact with this. But that doesn't mean it's not, it can't be good. Uh, you can tell a good story with those parameters. I, it looks interesting. Something um, I would like to play. Whenever I see one of these games, I'm always like, it all, they all remind me of Chasing Static because that was a game that I wanted to give my time of day and then just forgot. And, I don't know. We might see a chasing static segment coming up because that um I feel like maybe that didn't get the attention it, it deserved. This looks good too though. Zuchosis. Zuchosis. Interesting. Speaking of horrifying animals, this is a different aspect of it. Imagine dinosaurs and mammals and prehistoric things made out of robot parts. Um so Horizon Forbidden West released on the 22nd, uh, which is like 2 days ago, um which is the second game in the Horizon series. Uh, they apparently this is the best uh, PlayStation to PC port so far, right? Um, it's got a 93, I believe, on uh, on Steam, b- uh, based off of like over 2,000 reviews. Um, everyone's saying that it's running great. It looks great. It's super smooth. It's super easy to play. Um, and uh, yeah, if you've never played a Horizon game they are definitely unique in the sense of like the atmosphere and things like that. Just playing like as a tribes person um, in like a super, I don't know, super far advanced post-apocalyptic world where like nature has now been turned into robots. is kind of a unique idea in my eyes. Um, I've played the first one. I've beaten the first one. I haven't played the second one. I may play it on PC just to kind of compare. Um, but like from the trailer and like the actual gameplay trailers, it looks great. Like it looks, it looks really smooth. It looks really nice. So, I remember I uh, up. Chad used to play uh, work for Sony, and he got he would get every game. So he was kind of like very jaded. You know, they were all free, and anything that would be on the PlayStation Store, he would get for free. So for him to play a game more than once was a big. And then he just laid on the couch and played this for three days until he finished it, the first one. Um, yeah, it would have would it. I mean, I don't think this is a setting. It's a unique setting. It's never been done that I know of. It's like both extremely futuristic and extremely prehistoric at the same time. It's very cool. Yeah. Have you guys, do you guys remember what game Guerrilla Games used to make? And when they announced Horizon, they were, people were like dumbfounded. They were like, what game are you making? Do you remember Uh, what they used to make? They made no, Helldivers too. They made Ghost, um, Ratchet and Clank. Uh, no. So they made they made an old game. It was called Hellzone, and it was mm. like a third person shooter. It was supposed to be like the um, what is it called? Like a third person Gears Diablo? of War, oh. like a Gears of War for a PlayStation. But it was oh. like super graphic and super violent, and uh, it was pretty fucking awesome, to be honest. Um, but yeah, they switch. They completely switch directions. They're like, we're not going to make any more kill zone. Uh, we're going to just make 
uh, we're gonna make a new game, and they came out with Horizon uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which was the like, first one. But uh, they have, people uh, loved it. I think their main office is in Amsterdam, uh, in in the Netherlands. Um, I was looking up uh, possible studios to go to, <laughs> and it surprised me that they weren't um, in North America for some reason. Just because I've seen um, my roommate play through Horizon Zero Dawn, and or uh, and I, I was just surprised that that came from I don't know the other side of the pond. It seemed very Americanized, if that makes sense. It, Sma- d- it does. Yeah. Smash cut to uh, one year before Horizon Zero Dawn to a uh, fucking smoke shop. Hey man, what if we put cavemen and robots together? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what if raptors were made out of robot parts? <laughs> But no, it's a, it's a it's awesome. I love kill. I mean, I loved uh, Horizon One, so I'll probably be playing this on PC. Sick, dude. Sweet yeah. guys, it's time. It's time to yes, that sound. Ninety five dollars is in the pot. That's crazy. It's a crazy amount of money. A Steam credit that the winner of whoever guesses this sound uh, will get. This is the mystery sound. This is what people have been guessing. It's easy. All you have to do is email pixelshitshow at gmail.com to guess if you know where that sound comes from and what's happening to make it. Um, At random, every week, I'll choose an answer. This week, we have a guess from Buthrax, like anthrax, but with a butt, I think. Mm. And he guesses, uh, it's a crowbar hitting a big metal door in Black Mesa. And Mm. I'm just going to read my fellow casters in the room. What do you guys think about this guess? It's really close. It doesn't it's explain the good. hissing, but it's very close. Maybe the hissing is something in the background. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Okay. Bobby, do you have any thoughts? Mm, I mean, it could be. I think that's a good guess, but I don't think that's what it is. I think that second sound has some significance. Okay. Okay. Well, I do have to say, Buthrax. Oof. Unfortunately. Mm. You didn't get it this week, so that means that next week there will be a hundred dollars in the pot. And again, email pixelshitshow at gmail dot com. I guess is there a new hint? Luck. Nah, I mean we're, uh, you know, if we're playing the hot and cold game, we're pretty hot. I gotta say, yeah, I yeah. I don't know if we need any more hints, but we're just also not- if you listen to the rest of the episode, Christians past play like it makes sense just saying but i don't know i don't know we don't know christian's the only one who knows yeah he doesn't tell us things he just no. tells us to get on and yells at us, and yeah. gets us <laughs> with a stick all right we don't have any subs We're moving right along the listener questions bobby what do we got got a few listener questions first one comes from time killer b how about a speedo picture at this year's dlg con well, it's going to be digital, so that's going to be on Twitch. So if we did that, we would be pulled and the whole thing would fall apart. So no, <laughs> we can't yeah. do it, dude. Well, a- anyway, you cut it. That's going to be a hard pass for me. <laughs> it says the guy oh, yeah. with the best body out of all of us, I would say. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if anybody I'm over here like a cashew. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby built like a string bean, but it's not really like a cashew crusader. Put, put that into your chat GPT or AI image generator. A cashew in a G string. Cashew in a speed. When I see people at the pool in speedos, they always look, no matter what their body type, they always look so confident. And they're always so fast in the water, you know? They're speedy. Why? Because they're wearing a speedo. Nick had mm-hmm. an idea about a sexy calendar earlier in the episode, and I feel like this fits right in, right? Yeah, I think so. Nick, can we count on you? If I do no. it, will you do it? No, definitely not. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, maybe. Uh, if you do it, maybe I'll do it. We'll see. Okay. Uh, stretch I got to wear pasties. Goal. I don't yeah, know. I might, I might make some community that. guidelines. Need a lot of Photoshop <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> do they have a stretch marks filter? I'm just kidding. All right. Next question from Afro Dragon. What game do you think has the best or unique settings overall? Video gameplay, controls for audio, most recently, Hell Divers Two did a good job. Uh, I mean, we just mentioned it, right? I think uh, I think Horizon has so many unique mechanics, and the environment is so unique. It's probably one of the best I've ever played. So, 
Yeah, I think Horizon answer. won a bunch of awards for accessibility, like um, gameplay for people who have seeing difficulties, people who are deaf, people who are colorblind. They have like a lot. Oh no, I'm misspeaking. That was The Last of Us, Last of Us Part One and Two. They did a whole accessibility suite for those games and like really deep settings where you can, you know, change the font of every UI in the game, the sound level of different objects as they come at you, color balancing, all that stuff. So I think that would be my Speeding up Bellatro is the best thing. <laughs> <I think. laughs> oh man. I've never played Gears Tactics, but I remember everyone talking about how good their settings were. Yeah. And what I always pr- appreciate in settings is when they have a slider bar so you can see what the maximum setting is. Because I go in and I just set everything to the top setting, you know, because I have a fairly modern graphics card now and I can do that. A um, little bit of a brag there. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to come out like that. But uh, like I hate when I have to go in and I click right and I keep clicking right and it's like, I medium high ultra mega ultra ultra x x x and then i click right one more time and then it's like low and i'm like okay then i got to go back once to uh the super duper ultra deluxe setting and then i have to do that for every single one and it just seems like such an annoying task and i think they've gotten better in general with settings in video games there was this period of time maybe in like the mid 2010s or early 2010s where you'd go in and there'd just be so much stuff in there and this was before you had things like um ge force where you could just like click a button and just get the best settings for your graphics card okay anybody else yeah no interesting nope okay (laughs) (laughs) all right um i got nothing Next question, or we've got a few questions from Zap. What's one canceled game you'd like to see completed? Oh my God, dude. Star Wars 1313, but they were making a single player bounty hunter uh, game, probably set in the Mandalorian universe that just got canceled. So we didn't get Star Wars 1313, which was the first bounty hunter game, and we didn't get the new bounty hunter game. Uh, Any of those should be Well, 1313 pretty much became... What's that game that I didn't finish? The Star Wars game that everybody likes with oh, the red-headed right. Jedi. Did it? What? What are you talking about? What do you mean com- basically became? Explain yeah, it was all in that book, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. I read the book. Yeah, didn't the that project got scrapped, but then the assets for that got used in, uh, what is that Star Wars game? Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's worth a fact check. I don't remember that part of the book, but... Um... It would make sense, I guess. I'm gonna go with Spore too, <laughs> even though it was never even, it was never even planned. Uh, I'm gonna go with um, Silent Hills, which was the game that PT was supposed to be uh, become. Uh, it just got canceled. So um, yeah, I mean, I loved PT. It, like it was one of the first games in a very long time that like scared me so fucking much, dude. I was just like, this is true horror in a video game as far as like making you feel uncomfortable um so i wish that they made that but they didn't okay Hmm. is the uh verdict in bobby uh it is jedi fallen order was the game i was referring to um but yeah i don't know just on a quick google search i'm not seeing that but i'm pretty sure i remember reading in that book that that's what happened and usually stuff like that makes sense i mean when they stop developing a game they don't just like be like okay let's throw all this stuff away you know i think they do i i don't know if those games are compatible just on time frame like the visual assets from 1313 wasn't that canceled in like 2014 2015 like ages ago hmm yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, Who knows? I could be wrong. We, we could only but, speculate. I don't know. There's a long list of Blizzard games that got canceled, and then um, everybody thought they would have sounded amazing. But who knows if they would have been the first-person shooter StarCraft game? Um, the was it Titan? I think Titan was the name of the big MMO they were working on, and then they scrapped that and then used all the assets to make Overwatch. That's that right. I just Dude, uh, I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. I just shared a uh, cashew in a speedo amongst us. 
<laughs> share share as much as you would like. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, that that, that looks like that's uh, like a, a speedo made of a cashew. That, that's true. No, the that person like, does look yep. like a cashew too. That looks like uh, a character in like a Tim Burton Nightmare Before Halloween. Like, I'm pretty sure that's what. That oh, is. like the alchemist guy from that. Yeah. Night. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> what was your favorite book slash book series as a kid? Um, obviously, from my Ender's Logic tag, Ender's Game blew me away. Uh, and then I read all. There's a lot of spinoffs. That guy, uh, Card Orson Scott Card, Orson I Scott his, Card. Yeah. yeah, he thinks in incredible timelines. Like when when he makes a sequel, that sequel's forty thousand years in the future from the first book, and you're like, "Wow, what the fuck?" And you're 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 reading about the descendants of the idea of a whisper of a fart of the people but it's crazy to see little hints of like that first book 40,000 years later uh, and how that he sees that would have been implemented very interesting i i, I devoured all the card books uh, there might be more now but, but i didn't know and then it's funny cuz like my favorite car character in the original ender's game was bean and bean was the only kid that was smarter than um than ender and he has his own series like a spin-off and i was like i could not believe it like when i found out that there was a spin-off of my favorite character and that spin-off <laughs> had sequels forget about it dude that's uh, awesome yeah, yeah that's pretty good. what about you bobby mm, favorite book as a kid Probably, I started reading uh, Michael Crichton novels when I was really young, like too young to really understand all of it. And I love Jurassic Park. Of course, it came out at the same time as the movie. So that or, I don't know, man, why are we talking about books? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, so why, why would you hate books? <laughs> Jesus. No, he's, he's on books the spot. don't matter. Blushing. Video games don't matter. Uh, it's he's No, like, I mean, it, it's not, I don't, I, I just don't feel like. Uh, I, I have any interest, anything interesting to say about books. Um, I, I'm rereading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe right now. Um, I'm going to try to read the whole series. I, I think I've done that when I was younger, but I can't remember any of them except the first book. How but many books I'm, is that? Is that three? No, it's it like five. five or six. Oh, oh damn. Yeah. It's a series um, I've never even tried. When I, when I was a kid, I loved everything sci-fi. Um, it's hard to pick a favorite. I think uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy really stuck with me. That whole series of books, like the anthology five. I think there's five books in it. Oh, it's right behind me. I guess I could look somewhere there. Um, it's almost philosophy, dude. It is. Like, it It. It captured me in a, a weird, you know, in a formative moment in my life. And I was like, oh, mm, inter Like, it was blasting me with all these weird ideas and written in a really... Um, unstable way when i read too much at night i felt like my brain go weird you know i was like oh i have to put this book down something weird is happening like you know the way he describes reality um is is weird uh but probably the new jedi order series from uh the star wars expanded universe books i think i've reread them a bunch and so i've probably that edges over um uh douglas adams there yeah. Dude, the Da Vinci Code changed my life. It, I led to the beginning seeds of me becoming an atheist. That's impressive. From like, from like a. Did you read it as a kid? Um, no, I just wanted to say that <laughs> book books can be uh, formative. Yeah, for one of the Even as for an that adult. For that guy who hates Magic the Gathering, uh, my favorite books as a kid, and I read it at eleven years old, and I probably shouldn't have, is The Moons of Mirrodin which is book one of the uh, three book series. Cause they used to do that every time they release new cards uh, or every other time they release new cards, they would come up with like books to kind of give background to that setting. And I just remember seeing the cover and it's like a lady with like really green skin and she's not wearing pants. She's wearing like a corset and she's like looking sideways. I'm like, as an 11 year old, you're like, 
what's that book about <laughs> and then like the opening the opening chapter like describes her seeing what razor grass is and like a butterfly lands on it and gets cut in half you're like this is metal as shit um <laughs> and then the the two books after that are pretty good uh it's a dark steel eye and the fifth dawn um Nirden is such a wacky and kooky place because everything's kind of made out of metal um if you've never read those books i would suggest doing it i think you can buy all three for like 10 bucks um yeah fun times, Mag- fun times i didn't even know magic had like an expanded novel universe that's dude and it's it's coming back so like right now the the set that just came out like the murder mystery set they had like nine or ten episodes of like lore come out for the series that like explained what was going on in the murder mystery and who did it like short stories or like 30 minute episodes 40 minutes episodes of like so like somebody just talking about the lore and like answering questions and stuff like that oh gotcha and then, okay but there, there's talks of like the books coming back because they're magic just had like this whole like i don't want to call it like multiverse moment but like essentially all of the characters that were important kind of came down onto one plane of existence and now everything's kind of reset and so they're kind of like reforming the lore and there's now like a main story that everybody's following so yeah. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Final question from Zap. Where do you go for gaming news? Bump to bluesnews.com if you don't already read it. What is this? I've like never heard of Blue. Yeah, I've Clues. never heard of Blues Clues. Um I <laughs> this is probably not the best source, but um Google now, I think they you used to call it when it first came out, but it's basically your Google feed, right? When, right underneath your Google search bar on your phone is a bunch of articles that are tailored to you. And that shit uh, is always interesting to me. Like, it's like everything that I'm interested in. Uh, and the, I say that it's probably not a good source because, you know, it's always roguelikes and it's always like things like that. But I do click on them and they are interesting to me. So yeah that's not a, not not the best answer but it is the truth this probably isn't nice. any better of an answer but r slash gaming leaks and rumors seems to get news very early before it goes out to the rest of the uh to the rest of the world uh obviously it just pops up on reddit you know whenever something's upvoted in my feed i look at it but um those ones always make me stop and pause and look again otherwise you know I'm going all the normal sites, PC Gamer, Polygon, Eurogamer, you know, whenever they have an article that's interested in like what I'm looking up, um, I'll read. Hmm. I don't really seek out game news that much. Sometimes I come across it when I'm scrolling through my Google feed, uh, but typically it's somebody else that's just like, hey, have you heard about this? Um, somebody actually messaged me this week and was like, have you heard about what's going on with, what is it, Kotaku or something? And uh, I had not. And um, Crowdsource. What about Crowdsource? Bazinga. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you, know, you use the community to uh, find. Yeah, oh, I, I, I suppose. But I don't know. I guess... It, if you don't really care that much, then I guess you're not going to go out and hunt out that information. But for me, I don't know. Not a lot of gaming news applies to me, I've found. There's like very specific things that I'm interested in and everything else I've, is just kind of like, I, like, I don't know, just noise. So I've tried to cultivate my Google feed to get stuff that I care about, but still it's just like a lot of stuff seems to sneak in. I still re- read a lot of stuff off of like PC Gamer too. Yeah, which is funny. I do too. I'm. It's funny. It might not even be the best writing or whatever anymore, but I I always click on PC Gamer. If there's a if there's a bunch of reviews or if there's a bunch of articles on one thing, I'll always click on the PC Gamer one. Yeah. Well, I actually yeah. feel like the writing's gotten better. I mean, not that it was bad before, but no, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying that. Yeah, I have some sort of like loyalty. Okay. To They're them. listening right now. I, I have this. I have this. Uh, we I have see this you, memory. 
I have this memory from a long time ago where Bobby was lambasting this author about how he started this review. He's like, he started, the the car was red and the sound was, I forget exactly what you said, but you basically said. I remember it exactly. I was not (laughs) lambasting him. (laughs) And then we went, we went and saw the review actually in person. And it was like a sentence of whatever flavor, like one sentence. And then he started the review. me and Amelia were like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, I feel like it was more than a sentence. Yeah, it was for Planet Side 2. And um, <laughs> yeah, and he had like a, a very descriptive beginning to this, describing how he's rolling through the hills, blasting enemies. It was very poetic. And I was just like, it's, I don't know. I hated Planet Side 2. So maybe I was just like, no. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. But yeah, I read an article, I think on PC Gamer recently that I thought was really good. So good that I was almost going to mention it on the show. And now I can't. And then I was like, no, nobody wants to hear that. And now I've forgotten what it was. But and now we all want to hear it. Yeah, we all want to hear it. What a good hook for next episode. Yeah, Bobby. but you know what? It's not It's not the game reviews, too. I don't read any game reviews. The only game reviews I ever read are on Steam because I feel like that's the real deal, dude. That's like, uh, that's like some dude at the bus stop giving you like the, his real opinions or thoughts or something, you know? Like, I don't want to hear, I, I don't want to hear game journalism, like for your, your game reviews. I feel like that's completely useless and uh, completely unrelevant for me. I don't know. Really? Sorry to smash that's a whole crazy. Yeah, no, it is. And like, I know that's not like, like, um, there's probably a lot of people that feel otherwise. I'm sure most people do. But for me, like I get nothing out of reading like a game review on like IGN or PC Gamer. Uh, what I really enjoy on those sites, IGN or PC Gamer, is um, kind of like their uh, their editorials or when they talk about something else, just kind of about gaming, gaming in general and um, opin- an opinion they might have on on a trend or something like that. That's what I find interesting. But yeah, I don't know. I just go to Steam reviews and someone's just like, yeah, it sucks because of these bullet points and it's good because of these bullet points. Like, that's what I need. Dude, you have to be careful about those people at the bus stop. One time I was at a bus stop in New Zealand and some guy came up and he unfurled this note and he had handwritten this URL on it. He's like, hey, you want to check out my website? I was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you want to check it out? Like clearly handwritten and he had like a bunch of them in his pocket. So I took one and then unprompted, he starts going on this rant about how they're hiding all the nukes in the world in Michelle Obama's cunt. And I was like, what, 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 what is happening at this bus stop right now? And then I went to the website and it was like laser brained unhinged. Like it, it was, um, it, it, it sounds was like creepy. the beginning of did a you good run into novel, Alex dude. Jones at a bus stop. Is yeah. That I was about to say, did you run it, into it was one of the theories? creepiest websites I've ever visited. And I'm unsure if he, he tried to make it creepy. You know, I, I think he was just actually mentally unstable and what he designed the website to be kind of reflected that. it would. Hmm. I wish I had the link. It was so weird, but I thought I got a virus instantly and I was like, ah, um, yeah. So uh, anyways, bus stops. I am going to check out Blue News though. I, I need a better source. Blue's News. Yeah, <clears throat> never heard of that. Yeah, me neither. All right, uh, next week. Uh, I don't want to play Bellatro more. I don't. Um, I feel like it's a waste of time somehow. I don't know. And other things aren't, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I'll just say, uh, I don't know. I guess I'll say uh, cyberpunk. I don't know why once I hit the fucking DLC, that's supposed to be better than the first game. I stopped playing it, but yeah, that's where I'm going to say. Cool. Cyberpunk, uh, not a waste of time. I'm going to play Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles, which you heard about earlier. Um, I I don't know what I'm going to play, but it might be Hero Siege this week. I hear that game has just gotten terrible recently, and I want to see if that's true. I remember really enjoying it, but apparently it's awful now. Ha! I'll be playing Helldivers 2 with my friends who just bought it. So, yeah. All right. Um, that's a show. Speaking for Christian, Nick, Bobby, and myself, we're going to go with... Green Lady in a Corset Titties. Bye, everybody. Ooh. Dude, my grandma's bookshelf was an amazing spot to find inappropriate sexy books. We all know about you. Bro, the romance books. Dude, they caveman smut. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go.
let's count let's count down i gotta go my daughter's going nuts